don't know? Exhibition and Seminar 2022, the 11th edition, ladies and gentlemen, from a humble beginning, from a committed beginning back in the year 2000, now moving on to become one of the key flagship biennial events, defense events of the region. May I request all our distinguished guests to kindly be seated as we proceed further with our inauguration ceremony. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we have a very special address by the chief guest of today's function, the Honorable Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. May I request His Excellency, Mr. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, to please come up and share his views. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Federal Minister for Defense Production, Federal and Provincial Ministers, Chief Minister Sin, the Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff, Services Chiefs, Director General, Defense Export Promotion Organization, Senior Civil and Military Delegates, Chairman and Chief Executive of the national and international defense organizations, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and good morning. It is my pleasure to speak at the 11th edition of the International Defense Exhibition and Seminar, commonly known as IDEAS 2022. I'm very pleased to see the presence of a large number of guests, including honorable delegates, exhibitors, and trade visitors who traveled from around the world to join us today. I welcome you all to this special edition of Innovation and Excellence. Indeed, your presence here today truly strengthens our resolve to foster and promote strategic relations with our partners and friends while encouraging technological growth and knowledge sharing. Distinguished guests, since assuming, uh, since uh, our government formed, our unity government uh, formed in April this year, the coalition government has been engaged in efforts to bring the country out of various challenges. The most serious among these crises that has expended most of our time and energy is the stabilization of our economy. We inherited an economic catastrophe where Pakistan was on the precipice of a default and shukr alhamdulillah by the grace of God and the efforts uh, of the unity government and the prime minister's uh, financial team, Pakistan was saved uh, from the brink uh, of an economic uh, crisis we have yet to witness in our history. The most unfortunate aspect of this economic crisis was in addition to the economic impacts of the COVID pandemic that affects each and every nation across the world and is called cause economic difficulties for citizens everywhere. In addition to the economic impact of the conflict, the Russia-Ukraine uh, uh, conflict, the risk of economic default in Pakistan was not only exacerbated by these factors, but a direct result of conscious, conscious uh, decision making. This was effectively uh, a collective shooting oneself in the foot. Uh, and it is something that we must all agree should never happen again uh, in the course of our uh, governments come and go, political parties change, 
but we should never compromise the fundamentals of our national economic policy. At this time, we've been focused on making service delivery efficient and people-centered, fixing Pakistan's energy woes, rebuilding Pakistan's foreign relations, and giving a sense of uh, uh, giving a sense of stability in our policy, if not political, environment. As far as foreign policy is concerned, I'm happy to report, as a result of our teamwork and extensive positive uh, engagement across the board, Pakistan's diplomatic relations, diplomatic ties, uh, have gone from strength to strength. Over the past six months, we've witnessed a positive trajectory of our diplomatic relations, uh, be it with uh, the East, the Middle East, the West, or the rest uh, of the world, uh, cul culminating uh, in our exit from the uh, FATF Grey List, the Financial Action Task Force, and on our way, hopefully, for the restoration of our GSP Plus status. Just when this uh, looming economic crisis was averted and things started to move in a positive direction, we experienced the worst ever climate catastrophe that Pakistan has ever seen. The monster monsoon on steroids, as Secretary General Antonio Guterres put it, resulted in one third of the land mass of our country being underwater. One in seven people uh, affected, that's 33 million uh, people of Pakistan, 16 million of which are children, 600,000 women uh, waiting to give birth. The impacts of this on the backbone of our economy, the agricultural sector, have been devastating. The total uh, loss and damage is estimated at more than $32 billion, which is 10% of Pakistan's GDP. This uh, climate event will directly correlate with a significant portion of our population being thrust below the poverty line. Given the massive scale of destruction, we have been pushed back for decades. But in every crisis, there is an opportunity. And in th we can convert this crisis into an opportunity if Pakistan commits to not only investing in these less developed areas in these rural areas that have been devastated by the uh, flooding, but also as we look towards reconstruction and rehabilitation, we hope to do so in a climate resilient manner. We, we too share the aspiration to not only build back, but build back better. In our interactions uh, with world leaders, including the recently concluded COP27, we have underlined the need for concentrated global action to take climate change as a priority. As the chair of the G77 plus China, we have led the demands of the global south for climate finance and climate justice to enable developing countries to cope with climate adaptation and mitigation challenge, uh, mitigation challenges. But in addition to that, uh, we have, alhamdulillah, been successful, and this is a success not only of the developing world that has long held this demand, uh, but of, 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 of Pakistan and the people of Pakistan that following the devastation uh, from uh, this uh, climate catastrophe in our capacity as G77 chair, we have successfully negotiated to add on to uh, the G uh, COP27, the G7 agenda, in addition to mitigation and adaptation, but the concept of loss and damage. Because it was only after we in Pakistan experienced the devastation of these floods that have resulted in a 10% loss to our uh, GDP, that it became evident to us 
that there was no international financing mechanism for devastation, for loss and damage of this scale. And it was after our own experience that we joined uh, the many countries that have long been demanding that loss and damage be added to, it, added to the COP and global agenda. And we hope if it was too late for the people to, of Pakistan to benefit from the lack of such an institution, that the ne next country, the next developing country to be affected will be able to be benefit from an internationally agreed upon mechanism for financing loss and damage. There should be no doubt in anyone's mind about the potential of climate change to reverse all endeavors for sustainable development goals. Climate change is one of the most national, uh, the most national security threats that can ignite and deepen uh, conflicts. And as we have witnessed, Pakistan is now nine, ground zero for climate-induced disasters and must prepare for the challenges associated. Ladies and gentlemen, today the increasingly complex security environment poses multifaceted threats to national security and stability of, um, and stability of the countries. With rapid advancement in technologies and proliferation of related knowledge, we are experiencing a visible change in, in the established security paradigm. In today's globalized world, the national, secu national security has emerged as a dynamic concept that is much, as much economic, political, social, and institutional as it is military and strategic in nature. In an age of fake news and disinformation, the threats to national security have increased manyfold. The specter of rising global food and energy prices is putting immense strain on national cohesion and unity, thus deepening internal fault lines. It is our considered opinion that the best way to safeguard and strengthen national security is to achieve economic self-reliance, rebuild and strengthen uh, political institutions, deli deliver the 21st century governance that is demanded and required, ensure rule of law, and put the people at the center of public policy. This requires a much needed reset in our thinking, as well as the way we conduct the business of the state. Internal consolidation can alone enable our, national, uh, our nation to secure its core uh, economic, foreign policy, and security uh, interests. Uh, and in order to do so, each uh, institutional must function within not only their constitutional uh, domain, but with a primary focus on their objective, on their national goal. For example, I am a politician, I am a parliamentarian, and I uh, represent my constituency in parliament. My job is to be answerable to parliament, to be present in parliament, and rather than uh, lashing it out with my political opponents on the streets or in the public arena, we have created this forum where all people of Pakistan can be represented, where our exchange of ideas, our debate should lead to the addressing of issues of national importance through consensus so we can move beyond our consistent state of flux and focus on the priorities of our nation. Distinguished audiences, the new technologies led by this re revolution in the field of artificial intelligence are playing a vital role in confronting various security challenges. In my view, the responsible use of technology advancement can make the world a better and safer place. Pakistan, being a responsible state, is always committed to play its role for international peace, stability, and order. Reciprocity, mutual interests, and international norms are the guiding principles that govern Pakistan's relations and the bilateral and multilateral levels. In the regional context, the transformation of South Asian geostrategic environment has further accentuated the importance of this region in world affairs. 
Resultantly, regional cooperation and active engagement of regional and global players has become imperative, particularly to achieve regional peace, security, and social economic development. On the other hand, instability and turmoil that has beset our region for many decades also needs a firm and coordinated response by all stakeholders. We believe in meaningful dialogue on the basis of equality, not only to resolve bilateral issues, but also to unpack the immense economic potential of our region. It is here that the peaceful resolution of the long-standing Occupy Jammu and Kashmir issue is in light of the UN resolutions and aspirations of the Kashmiris is central to establishment of sustainable peace in South Asia. Distinguished guests, it is heartening to note that Pakistan's industry has now achieved a good level of quality and reliability wherein its products are, com are comfortably competing in the international defense market. Though Pakistan is now exporting some high-tech defense uh, products to more than 60 countries, yet the volume of exports, in my opinion, is not uh, commensurate to our actual and true potential. A crucial factor in this context has been the limited involvement of the private sector in defense production and export activities. In addition, relatively less attention has been paid to academia industry interface and in the involvement of R&D organizations which has curtailed the competitiveness of certain sectors of this industry. In order to achieve this objective, I will stress upon the integration of public-private defense industry to achieve maximum results. New ideas and the entrepreneurial and management skills of the private sector need, need to be co-opted with public sector defense industry. The potential of academia and R&D organizations needs to be incorporated with the defense industry for more efficiency as well as volume to our defense production exports. Our government, ladies and gentlemen, will continue to promote a business-friendly environment for investments in human capital and professional development in the demand-driven industry. The Unity Government is also committed to deliver an industrial strategy that contributes to growth and employment and encourages small and medium enterprises to come forward and join hands for the development of our defense industry. In this regard, I look forward to the Ministry of Defense Production's formulation of a clear policy framework to integrate the whole potential of Pakistan's defense industry. Distinguished guests, we, uh, when we talk about uh, the defense industry, international defense exhibition and seminar is an iconic platform for showcasing the latest defense technologies and innovations. In fact, IDEAS is a regional gateway for international manufacturers and suppliers to explore new avenues of defense cooperation through joint ventures, outsourcing, and, collab uh, and collaborations. On the other hand, the presence of a large number of foreign exhibitors and delegates reflects Pakistan's deeply embedded and mutually beneficial relations with the international fraternity. I would say that IDEAS is a shared vision for global peace, stability, and harmony amongst the community of nations. And the IDEAS uh, slogan, Arms for Peace, truly reflects Pakistan's principal stance in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, before I wind up, allow me to appreciate the efforts of the Ministry of Defense Production, Defense Export Promotion Organization for successfully holding a series of ideas to, ex a series of ideas to exhibit the best of Pakistan's defense sector and promoting international cooperation in the field of defense production. I applaud the continuous support of the federal and provincial ministers, the Pakistan Armed Forces, law enforcement agencies, and the government of Sin uh, for the successful conduct of this mega event. I am also very pleased to know that the Pakistan Postal Services has issued a commemorative postage stamp to complement the holding of this very special edition of Ideas 2022 in the 75th year of the independence of Pakistan. And I am positive that this landmark event will achieve more progress in the years to come. I thank you all. Pakistan, Bindabad.
Thank you to the Honorable Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. And what a quote, when we're talk talking about ideas, I'm reminded of the quote by the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Benazir Bhutto Shaheed Sahiba, who said, you can imprison a man, but not an idea. You can exile a man, but not an idea. You can eliminate a man, but not an idea. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about the ideas, Yes, it stands for the International Defense Exhibition and Seminar. But the idea that brings us all together over here is our commitment to global peace and stability. We stand here as a global commune ready to fight the various challenges as outlined by our Honorable Chief Guest. We are just not going to fight the symptoms by technologies and combined efforts. But we are talking about battling what is at the heart of these conflicts the unrest, the economic uncertainties, the COVID, the post-pandemic world, and most importantly, the vulnerability to climate impact. Together, we can indeed make it happen. And together we will, Sedra. And uh, the Foreign Minister rightly pointed out the geostrategic importance